Hey folks, Marcus here from the Ashen Fly Shop. Today we're going to tie a little trout spay fly that I've been working on for the mm, past couple weeks or so. Um, this is the critter that we'll be tying. Um, not the most innovative fly actually. It's basically um, just a woolly bugger. Um, it's got a few little tricks that make it similar to a more spay oriented fly like the dumbbell eye at the top um, but the basic gist of it um, and i've tied a fair amount of them um, that are just woolly buggers um, that's where this fly started um, and then i decided that i liked to have that little marabou tuft over the top just to give it a little shoulder um, which is something i learned a while back um, in a Kelly Gallup video and a pattern of his, I think it's the Pina MB has this, um, it's kind of a marabou style, but it has this marabou coming over the top too, which just adds a really nice um, kind of shoulder hunch profile to the top of the fly, which I like. So that's what we're gonna tie. We're gonna get right into it here. So, for this fly, um, with using the brass eye on here, I like to use the return eye shank from Aquaflies. I think the 27 millimeter is super awesome. If you're doing a bead or a little cone at the top of the fly, I've found, um, looks like I got a bunch of other stuff in here too, but I've found the 26 millimeter round eye shank to be the best one for beads. Um, but today we're gonna do one um, with a brass eye on here. So I'm gonna fit that into the vise. And I like to, if you can see, I like to put, you know, maybe a two millimeters of the shank into the vise um, just because um, when I, a, fix the trailing system, it's nice to have that extra room on the back. So for a hook on here, I like the SSW um, Super Needle Point size six. The Aqua Talon uh, uh, hook is a really good one from Aqua Flies 2, um, the Micro Barb. And then, you know, for a hook on a Trout Spay fly, if you're consistently getting fish over the hmm, like three pound mark, like fish that are gonna be over 20 inches often. Um, I'd probably run a four, honestly. But for the fish that I'm catching around here, a six seems appropriate. I, I could probably even get away with an eight on some of the fish. Um, so I'm gonna cut a little piece of rubber tubing um, that I like to get at the craft store. And then even on these trout style flies, I like to use um, a 30 pound break strength um, fire line. I just, I just want something that I have confidence in. <coughs> so you got it through the eye there. Slide kind of pinch both strands, slide the rubber tubing down. And then I really like to just kind of craft tubing um, has been really nice to just slide it over the eye of the hook. And that just seems to be for me a really good connection point. So now that I got the back rigged up, I'm going to start right up at the eye of the fly and just lay a little base of thread here. This is Vivas gel spun 50 denier in black and um, to be honest this is most of what I use anymore. This thread is super versatile. Um, it's a really good thread for spinning. Hair has been really awesome for traditionals because it's 
really small and strong when you're doing married wing stuff. And it's just been really versatile, good for intruders too. Just build up less, less thread. So I'm gonna make sure to do pretty consistent, tight wraps, keeping this fire line on top of the shank. And then I'll come through the eye and pull it straight down. And wrap all the way right up to the eye. And that way you're just not seeing a lot of white through there um, hanging out in the eye. And then same coming back, I'll just do I'll flip the vise and do really consistent wraps coming back. And I do leave some of that fire line kind of exposed on my first wrap back. And the main reason for that is that I like to do any more. I like to have a little coat of Zappa Gap. And I'm going to come up through that body again and just lock everything down. Not that I'm ever catching a trout that's big enough for that amount of thread and glue. But it's a good thing to be in the practice of. So I'll come all the way up to the eye. And for the eye on this, I'm using the Aquaflies Intruder Eyes um, in the 1 8 size. I like olive on this fly. I think um, you could just as easily um, put the black one on there. The black ones are super cool. But I'm actually going to get some of this super glue to dry here. I like to do that with something that's not my finger. So I'll just kind of get it in the zone that I'm looking to have it. Make sure to keep it kind of straight. I often rotate my vise so that I'm looking straight down the fly. And I'll do these figure eight motions here to lock it from all angles. And then once I've got it on there and there's not a ton of movement, I'll come in with a little, little touch of glue. Um, Particularly, I like to get that glue kind of right, right in there. Um, and that has just seemed to be a really good way to get those things locked in there. And then I'll do a, just a little figure eight on top of that glue. And for me, that process um, has meant that they're, they're totally locked in there. So now that I got the eyes locked in there and I've got my hook out of the danger zone with my magnet, I'm going to put the tail on here and this is just black marabou. Um, whether you've got X select space stuff or just a blood quill. The part of the feather that I really like to work with for woolly buggers is down here. You'll see a lot of store-bought buggers that use the tip for the tail, um, but because it's got the stem in there, it just has a lot less movement than if you just peel this stuff off of the back part of the feather. And it's nice, too, because a lot of this, when you're when you're tying steelhead flies, um, intruders and stuff, that bottom part of the feather oftentimes is not 
not stuff that we're using. So if you if you work with the tip of the feather for your intruder flies, and then you save that stuff, um, you'll just have good stuff for making marabou tails for your trout flies if you do any trout fishing. So I really like to wet the marabou um, to keep it out of the way, and I like to do one clump on top and a similar clump on the bottom. And that, doing one on the top and bottom is nice because I've got that little piece of rubber junction hanging out the back of the fly that kind of comes level in the fly. And if you get that tail to come on both sides of it in the water, if you had a piece of tubing that was clear or you know a fluorescent color, you could get that to be hidden by the tail, um, which is nice. So I've got kind of a top tail and a bottom tail. And I like to, on this fly, have just a little bit of flash. So I've got speckled copper flashaboo here, um, which I recently brought in in the shop. And it's probably my favorite color of flashaboo that there is, um, especially for this buggy trout space stuff. Um, as I'm just thinking about it, it's worth saying a lot of steelhead would eat this fly too. So if you want to tie it with a size four and fish it for summer steelhead, go for it. So I just took one strand of that speckled flashaboo and cut it into quarters. And I'll lay two strands on my near side. And then I just saw this technique works a little better for uh, getting rubber legs to flare out there, but I like doing it with flash of it too, just because it's quick and easy, but you, I'll do it again with, with the next thing that goes on here so you can see it again, but you wrap that flash of around the body, which is kind of a, kind of a cool thing. And I'll do the same thing with, in, Trout flies, I love these micro silicone legs. I've been using these in trout flies for like 10 years. Um, and I just think that these things are super buggy and fish really seem to like them, um, especially trout. So I'll tie one halfway down on my, on my near side. And then just like that flash of boo, I saw this technique in, uh, Beulah was doing some YouTube videos um, and they had a really cool video with some with some trout space stuff um, that Bruce Berry encouraged me to watch and that that leg technique is pretty cool wrapping around it just helps them flare off the side of the fly a little bit more which I like okay so I've got flash and rubber legs hanging um, off the so each side of this fly. Um, and like with trout tying, before I do anything else, I'm going to tie in what's going to be our, our ribbing material, just like you would do on a, on a woolly bugger. Before you wrap the body, you'd have, have some ribbing material in here and I'll come all the way back to the base and then just put that wire in my in my catcher there um, material clip and then I'll start a dubbing loop and make sure that it's locked down and then bring my thread towards the front of the fly and put a little hitch in there and then I like to use my bobbin cradle at this point just to keep that thread out of the way. Just put a little dubbing wax on the thread and I'll grab my loop spinner. For the body, 
I like Ice Dub um, and Peacock. There's a lot of buggy dubbings that you could use out there. Um, there's some new stuff out there. There's some super old stuff like uh, Angora. Um, makes good bodies on these flies. Another good color is the Ice Dub Chocolate Brown. Um, but this this peacock or peacock black has been really good. So I'll take that dub in my hand and I'll kind of roll it out a little bit. And this might, I might need a little more dubbing in there. Yeah, I'm gonna go for it. And I'll add more if I need. So I just give it a good spin. I always keep my finger on my thread when I do that. Just keeps that that um, dubbing loop just going. And I like to really pick it out. And I'm gonna I'm gonna re-wet this marabou just to keep it out of my way. Just keep all those tail materials. And then I'll just start to Roll forward. Mm -hmm. no. This is a really old bobbin. So I've got the dubbing wrapped through the body, and I really like to pick it out again. I just like these dub bodies, especially on Trout's Bay flies, to be really picked out, buggy looking. So I'm gonna put a hackle down here, and you could use the half saddles, you could use the Barred saddles from from MFC. You could you could use you know just a black saddle or a brown saddle looks really nice on there too. Um, I tend to like barring. It's not not super necessary, um, but it's kind of a cool cool effect to have through the fly. And I'll just make nice consistent wraps all the way to the tail. Pull my wire out of my material clip. Got some flash hanging in there. And then I'll come to counter wrap this. So the webbier the material, the more it's going to catch this wire as you come through. So a good way to get around that is just to to kind of weave that wire through those strands. And then you get a couple good wraps on there. The tail, you know, really light stems, just pulling them against that wire will pull them out. Um, but a thicker one like that, you gotta get in there and cut it. I always keep a spare set of scissors around for cutting wire. I like to keep one pair in better condition. Usually doesn't last as long as I like it to though. So this fly has this little bit of marabou coming off the top. You could use the tip here. I just don't think having that movement is as important as the tail. 
So if you wanted to use the tip and have it be a little stiffer, that would be just fine. Um, but like I did with the tail, I'm just gonna grab it straight off of the side of the feather. This is just part of the feather that I really like using. And that's a little sparse, so I'm gonna do another. So I've got a little marabou tuft up top, and I'm going to do another set of legs. I tend to like the front leg to be a little longer than the back leg, but that's, that's just preference. You can tie these in whatever, whatever length you want. And then I wrap them around the body. Just get some nice and splayed out. <clears throat> Trim those up a little bit. Length on the legs is, is totally up to you. Or if you even have legs, this is a pretty cool fly without any legs in it too. So for the collar, you can use a lot of different materials. Um, the first couple that I tied, I was basically just using a soft hackle, um, like a soft hackle hen. Um, but I'm starting to like ring neck pheasant too. Some of the bigger ones, your more spay type ring neck might be a little long. These just come in, in a strung version. Some of these are gonna be too long for a little trout fly butt like this, but if you if you pick through there and you find these shorter ones, that's just a perfect, perfect little collar. So I've got one of those selected here and have it kind of prepped and ready to go. So I'll tie it in tip first, right on top of where this marabou leaves off, clip it real short, I'm going to come in and grab this stem, peel all these back so they're straight out, grab the legs so they're not, not getting caught in there, and then just wrap forward and break my stem in half. Not the last time that'll happen to me. Like with any feather, you just want to make sure that you're not trapping too much of it when you're wrapping. And ideally, that last wrap will come close to right up at the base of those eyes. I do not like having any space between my collar and my eyes if I can avoid it. So I'll do a couple turns there. So after I've got that stem locked down, I do one last kind of figure eight. And then I like to tie these off um, in the front. If you wanted to fill this space up around the eye, you could certainly put a little dubbing, um, kind of weave a little dubbing through the eyes. Um, 
I do not mind having it look just like how a steelhead fly looks um, with thread built up over those eyes. I think that's just fine. I don't, I don't think a trout's going to mind that. So I'm going to come in with a little bit of UV. Probably left my bodkin at home, but I'm gonna work this, work it around a little bit. Just get it to fill. Fill all the little cracks in there. Make sure I've got good good coverage around the fly. I'm gonna light it up. This light, this is the kind of the mega light from from Loon that you can charge with a USB, and we use it. We use it for all of our knots at the shop, and it's. It's a lot better <laughs> than a lot of other lights out there. You can see this is what most UV lights look like. And that's what that thing looks like. And there's a practical purpose for that. The, the more UV that it's popping out there, the, the quicker it's going to cure that glue, which is nice. So when you're done with the fly, after you've got it out of the vise, you're going to have your little area of the fly, of the shank that you had in the vise. And to get the tubing to sit properly, you got to peel it back. With this really light stuff, it tends to slide over the hook a little bit, and I don't mind that at all because then I just grab the hook, slide it back, and when it's in place on the back of the hook, it's totally snugged back up into that marabou, and that's, that's proper. Um, I think that's exactly how a fly like this should be rigged. It does, getting that, that little, getting it to seat right, you end up kind of ripping the fly around a little bit. If any feathers rip out when you're doing it, probably means got to find a more durable way to tie your bugs. Um, but that is our trout spay fly. It's not an intruder. It's not quite a woolly bugger. Not quite sure what it is, but I'm pretty dang sure it'll catch a fish. So thank you very much for tuning in.